Hey guys, Tyler 2K here. I am re-recording the intro because I rearranged the video. Everything shown uh, can and might change by final release date. Please note that everything here, for the most part, is still speculation. Unlike the Asusena trailers, there was no accompanying information uh, for Victor. So uh, this is speculation that's based on my own experience with the game, as well as the fact that uh, Victor himself is the leader of the Raven Clan. So a lot of people incorrectly were saying stuff like, oh, Victor has a sword, so he's like Yoshimitsu. No, no, Victor is like Master Raven, who's like Raven. So we're gonna base everything of, that we know about Raven into uh, consideration here for Victor. But Victor is not Yoshimitsu at all. There's nothing similar to, between them. I know people, same thing, have been doing incorrect parallel drawn to him. So that's completely wrong. Uh, with that being said, yes, he's very similar to Kunimitsu as well, but you definitely can see like the Raven, uh, Lars inspiration here. They're actually, and you know, insert uh, cut footage here of the voice acting, but um, we do see that in the storyline, Victor does talk with Lars for his special force called, um, sorry, I, I don't know Norse, but it's like uh, Yggdrasil, uh, which is basically the mother tree in Norse mythology. The mother tree, the world tree, basically the, the life all uh, stems from the tree. And if you destroy the tree, basically the world is doomed to, to death. Uh, working in the background uh, with people like Victor to try to maintain world peace, despite the fact that uh, G Corp and the Mishima Zaibatsu uh, are like literally ending the world with like World War Three constantly, right? Other than that, yeah, uh, I don't have too many of my own opinions on Victor as a sign. The only kind of major concern I have with him is just his sword, because it looks a little too anime. If he had just a normal either katana or like um, like a French rapier or something like that, he would be fine. But he has like the anime sword. It's like, eh, that's kind of weird, but whatever. Now with that out of the way, I'm going to start early here uh, because I actually want to talk about the stage. So the stage is actually pretty interesting. First of all, if you notice, the stage isn't moving. When the gameplay is going on, you can see this, the movement, but you can see the, the boat's completely stationary. Uh, it's completely stationary on this shot too. It's stationary on this shot. And then finally, once we get into the gameplay, uh, we can see that the boat is indeed moving. So uh, it, I'm kind of curious how they're going to make the stage actually work. In the case of like <clears throat> Soul Calibur, usually it, they do like some trickery to make the background look like it's moving. In this case, it might be a little bit more trickery. So obviously this will be the starting point right on this um, bridge here. But if you look on the reverse side, uh, we also have a, a bridge that we're coming to. So I wonder if what's going to happen is as we go around uh, the River Sen here, uh, we're just going to be teleporting to it. The reason why I say that and why it might not be teleporting is simply for what we'll see in just a second. Uh, also, I, I, you know, shout outs to the Titanic reference on the front. Uh, we have someone with uh, a woman and a man with their arms, you know, I'm king of world sort of thing going on. So that's pretty funny. Second thing here is we see that the windows are not broken. During gameplay, uh, we'll t I'll talk about it later, you can notice that the windows themselves will actually break. So this is basically not an, an invisible wall per se, uh, but will be the wall of the stage. Because if you look at the, the height wise, realistically, if someone was to fight here, like you just push them overboard and that's kind of about it for them. But uh, yeah, the, the windows do break when there's damage taken. Okay, so uh, one thing of note with the uh, Eiffel Tower here, because we are moving, you will notice that uh, not only do you have like the close range uh, movement of the boats and whatnot, uh, you know, the, the, the house is going by and stuff like that, uh, but also furthermore, we have parallax on the Eiffel Tower. So as the Eiffel, as we move, uh, the Eiffel Tower actually also moves. So I don't know if it's some trickery where we are indeed going on this like really big circular map. Uh, my guess, we are doing a teleport thing uh, which means that the Eiffel Tower is likely slowly rotating uh, to maintain proper parallax with the, the boat itself. So I'd be curious to see if some, who, like someone would break the stage down, like actually import the files and find out what the hell's going on. Because, yeah, I have, a, I have a feeling there is some there's some funkiness on the stage. And that's enough on the stage. Let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay. Yeah, this is not a power crush. Um, instead, it's a heat engager. I, I threw on the power crush at the end there because I was going over it one more time, and I'm like, uh, it kind of looks like a power crush, but yeah, in hindsight, clearly it's not. But we have some sort of 
top-down attack with the heat engager sparks on that. Uh, also, we see the heat engager speed um, lines, which is weird because the speed lines don't exist on all heat engagers, so there still might be a little trick to that. But we see Jack blocking that. Uh, Jack is, of course, turning red, so that is a uh, chip damage on block it um, i would imagine that this attack probably has some sort of attack throw built into it uh, and if it doesn't have an attack throw from this swipe that goes here uh, it might actually hit grounded so i think it down to or whatever this attack may be probably has good utility to it but if you go in here because i didn't show the frame data i just counted the frame data in the in the video uh, but yeah they recover at the same speed you see them both activating uh, on the same frame and actually one this is one of the great things about YouTube uh, but we can go frame by frame so here we go oh shit there you go so you notice the flinch the arm movement that means this is frame zero uh, and we're basically uh, zero one uh, you can notice the head the head is also a really good indicator for an animation so if you don't know what to look at you, you wonder how like someone like me figures out frames from videos the head is usually it. The head or hand. Sometimes, like Dragonov does this weird thing with his his. He has like a claw grip. His hand, his fingers will be out, but then like when he flinches, he does like this almost a uh, like a hungry hungry hippo sort of shit, where his hands just kind of flail around. It's it's really weird. It's an animation that's been around forever. But yes, the hands, but the head in this case. Head flinch. So zero, one. We see the uh, spark uh, initiate for power crush, uh, and then here of course we see. Uh, either a down four or a down back four. If we use Asusena for an example, this is likely command down back four instead. Uh, the real question about this down four, but obviously this looks like um, Shaheen down four, but if we use Asusena for a guide, like I said, it's probably down back four. Okay, so we hit counter hit. Now the question is, does this always shift to attack throw or does he always do the gunshot afterwards? Is this maybe like a... Leo, you know, down 4-2? Is this like a Brian down 3-2? Is the gunshot animation, is like the Victor player forced to hit the button? Uh, and the reason I say that is because the last hit of the gunshot clearly has like a high animation to it. And then on top of that, it very much clearly has like a stun animation. Now granted, there's no launcher here because the fall down speed and uh, rough recovery speed, you see the head flinch. We're basically even on hit, but the question is like, does this have a canned animation or does it require Victor to take the final uh, the final hit here? So I don't know, it's interesting to think about. It might not be an attack throw. If anything, having it not be an attack throw and require you to actually like explicitly hit the button makes it a little bit riskier, which is great because in Tekken 8, uh, generic down fours are launch punishable on standing hit, no longer just crouching. So in case you don't know that, there's going to be even bigger disparity between characters with good lows and bad lows. Uh, and it all stems from generic down four getting nerfed. Okay, so I mentioned this in the video, uh, but if you notice the first shot here for Victor, it looks like it misses um, Jack, but you see it barely grazes him like right outside of where the kidney would typically be. This animation itself is very reminis reminiscent of the movie Collateral, where Tom Cruise played a character called Vincent, who was a hitman who basically went around LA eliminating targets. So yeah, this very close uh, gun kata uh, style is like very reminiscent in that movie. People are saying like, oh, John Wick, which it might be, but from the like the blonde hair, or the not blonde hair, sorry, like the silver hair, uh, the suit, it looks way more like Vincent than it looks like John Wick. Although the funny Jean Wick, like weak, uh, it's pretty funny, so I, I can't. I get props to whoever came up with that. Let's go ahead and count the frames on the low here. So once again, we're going to look for the head flinch. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. I think I count this at 16 already. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this likely is not a ground hitting low. Uh, this probably requires uh, the op opponent to be standing. Uh, and the reason why this down four or down back four is really, really important is because if you notice later, and I'll go ahead, insert footage here for Whitehole. Uh, if you notice later, every single time Vincent attacks you or does a teleport at the end, he ends in essentially into a Whitehole. Uh, so Whitehole, once again, is the Raven stance teleport where she doesn't do anything after. 
In Tekken 8, uh, Raven can white hole into forward facing or back facing like Shadow. Uh, Vincent doesn't appear to have any sort of white hole BT, but at the same time, we've only seen like two minutes of the dude, so he might have it. Uh, but what's really, really interesting is we have this 16 frame low, and if the low automatically transitions into attack throw, every time Vincent does white hole, he, that means he can use down back four for Oki, and then if the opponent mashes out, hey, all of a sudden we have an attack throw, uh, and then what happens? All of a sudden, we're now plus zero again in the wake up position where this wake up three will hit on 20, and your down back four hits on 16. Do the math, uh, you're gonna see this animation a lot and again this is things i want you know this these type of videos where i go a little big breakdown are things i want to talk about we just don't have time but yeah this is all all meta play that's going to come into the future here so prepare to see this prepare to see black uh, white hole into down back four reset every time it's going to be the meta and then going back to like a uh, down two or whatever this animation is Okay, you want to stay on the ground? Bam, down two, <laughs> you dumbass, on the ground. Get ready for it. Now, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not trying to doomsay here and say like Vincent's gonna be OP, but I don't think anyone really recognized the fact like how dangerous this Oki is gonna be because of White Hole leaving you at zero. So, uh, we'll see though. We'll see. Okay, so we see the overhead strike. Uh, once again, I talk about how this is minus four on block in the video. A lot of people thought this was plus frames. This is not plus frames. This animation you see here uh, is essentially what's called like a guard breaker. By definition, a guard breaker is it plus frames on block uh, and leads to a terminology that I call false advantage. So uh, in this position, basically Brian recovers quicker than Victor by, he's noticed the animation, see here? So he's recovered on this, an on this frame. And then four frames later, we see the, the weapon shift in, uh, what do you call it? Notice the head tilt and the weapon shift. So this is four frames. So head tilt, right? One, two, three, four, five. So this is the fifth the fifth frame. So uh, this is the first frame of animation. Um, so yeah, it's not plus frames. Again, this is like a m complete misunderstanding of how like Tekken works by people calling it plus. It's not plus. Now granted, in heat mode, uh, this will be plus frames proper, uh, and he transitions into power stance, but that will be once again later in the video here. Okay, so we see death from above. Notice from this death from above, it's like very, uh, really, really evasive. It is kind of closer to like a Kunimitsu up three plus four, but there should be a, a few things to note here. So the first thing of note is when he's coming down with two hands, so that means it likely is a, a one plus two input, of course. Second of all, in Tekken 8, all um, throws are universe, or sorry, one plus two throws are universally up forward one plus two. So that means this is not up forward one plus two. Third of all, Rage Art has a default animation or default input of down forward one plus two. So that means this is also not down forward one plus two, which is the old DFA input for Raven in Tekken 5 and in, in up to Tekken Tag 2. But yeah, in Tekken 7, down forward one plus two is now buzzsaw cancel into the mid option. but. Yeah, it doesn't matter because this is not up forward one plus two or down forward one plus two. Uh, so it likely is using that information about it being Kunimitsu. Probably up up one plus two. Also, I don't believe this being unblockable. There's no like barks on this hit at all when he comes down with it. A lot of animation to it, but I don't think there's any unblockable sparks there. Okay, so actually that's what I was talking about here. So again, notice how uh, the opponent's left at zero. In this case, um, Brian is recovering quicker than uh, Victor. But still, this might be right in that ballpark, you know, where he, if even Victor is still minus one or minus two, uh, down back four hitting on 16 will still beat wake up three or wake up four. So keep that in mind. Okay, so we see the one plus two animation. Uh, I believe one plus two is minus 13 or minus six or 14. Uh, but here we see a 10 frame one, one, two, two, which is pretty spicy because I, I wonder if that means that one, one, two, two uh, will be like really punishable on block or, you know, a non jailing string kind of similar to like Kunimitsu 222 and stuff like that. But I don't know, there's definitely not enough information, but it does appear to be NC, so that's a proper punisher. Okay, uh, I talked about this. This looks very similar to Steve, a back one. My guess is this animation is likely a back one. Uh, also, if you look at the frame data, because I don't think I talked about the frames on this move here, but it, it should hit 14. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
One, two, three. Okay, yeah, I, I might have counted wrong. So it's either 13 or 14. But we see the counter hit into the fo a high follow-up. If I was to take a guess, um, unlike uh, Asuseta, where she has like all these high options and the high options are counter at launchers, I think the opposite is kind of going to be true here for Victor. I I'm inclined to, inclined to believe uh, that this, you know, this high option will not be a counter at launcher, similar to what we see earlier, uh, or sorry, later with the rage art animation, like a Negan up four two. But I think on natural hit, this will still transition into attack throw. So I I I'm a fan of like follow up hits being guaranteed in the sense of attack throw and no, you know, you don't need to do a billion damage on a random high option, but still, I don't really like Asus in the design with having a million launchers, so I think it's fine. Okay, we see a little bit of like arm movement dancing with the Karambit. The animation is a little bit janky, but uh, you know, what can you do? It, it, all things considered, it doesn't look horrible in like, in you know, real time, so it's not bad. Also, we see here uh, with the, uh, like I said, the glass is non-broken. Uh, later in in the match or later in the video, we will see this glass being broken. So, okay, so we see um, uh, four plus two, one plus two, non starburst. So this is minus fourteen. Victor punishes with a what presumably is a down back one uh, one, looking you know identical to Noctis's. Uh, and actually, one thing I want to talk about here uh, with these animations and certain people kind of get lost in the sauce online. I'm not going to call anyone out. For instance, uh, later on, we'll see Crouch Dance 1, which animation-wise looks nearly identical to Noctis's Full Crouch Down Forward 2. But the problem is, it's not the same move at all. Here, uh, this Down Back 1 does matter uh, because it's essentially hitting on the same frame. So it's not just the animation that's the same, it's the attack that itself that's also the same. I think it's more important that you guys know when, again, things are mechanically identical versus just a shared animation. So. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm being pedantic or what, but once again, maybe it's just me. I don't know. Okay, so uh, we see the transition into, I call it Crouch Dance. We don't have any official information from Namco, uh, so I can't tell you guys exactly what it's called. Uh, I was hoping that, you know, by now uh, Namco would release something, but uh, clearly that's not going to be the case. I call it Crouch Dance because um, I wonder if with his arm elevated, it looks kind of similar-ish to... Uh, was it Leo up back one her her punch parry so I wonder if this has like a right punch parry built into it uh, or something like that or maybe he just crushes because he's a little bit hunched down but not really the Victor's like a really tall dude uh, he's probably one of the tallest characters in the game so I don't know it, it's hard to say but uh, clearly there's something special with the stance although at the same time if you look at the the speed of the stance all these stance transitions at, at real time are all really 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 fast Stance. So look, he he was in stance for what was that? Just a few frames. It, we'll we'll count it out. We'll, we won't even speculate here. Okay, stance. Okay, one, two. Oh, actually, you know what? No, we want to talk about the stance entrance into stance. Okay. So stance. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, by frame six, the the dude's already doing another attack. That's crazy. That's hella crazy. Wow. And yeah, it, even Power Stance looks to be this fast. Uh, again, we are watching the slow speed, but yeah, six frames is a, a, you know, a, a tenth of a second. That's really, really fast. So basically, uh, these are follow-ups that don't act so much as Stance, but will maybe, uh, you know, if you were to slow down the input, get your opponent to think about things. Uh, I, I did talk about this in the Jack trailer where When's a stance, not a stance. Uh, but yeah, this might be one of those cases where technically it's stance, but you're executing it so quickly uh, that it's not properly a stance in the grand scheme of things. Okay, and then from here, we just see a generic uh, a two throw. Uh, again, both players are recovering in full crouch. So uh, this crouch stance one looks to be otherwise mechanically identical to like dragon up down two, plus zero S for both players, allowing for mix up from here. Uh, and in here, yeah, Victor just goes for a throw. But you can see the animation. Uh, their heads are in sync, so they're both plus zero. So they're recovering at the same speed. The difference here is that Victor is taller, so he's going to stand up faster, like animation-wise, but, you know, that's about it. Okay, also interesting that Victor here ends with, like, a samurai, like, takedown. You know, acting more ninja-style with, like, the ravens, so it's weird that he has the very clear, like, ready stance. 
like uh, lunch, so it's kind of kind of spicy. Okay, four four two with uh, Lars, I believe minus twelve. This is likely down forward four two because down forward four are typically the quickest mid. What do you call it? Uh, right kick attack. Stand four is typically the fastest, and later on we'll see stand four hits on twelve. But this down forward four likely is. Uh, oh, sorry, this kick, this knee lifter is likely down forward four. But yeah, twelve frames into shoot. And sorry, if, if you're, in case you're wondering why I'm using the word shoot specifically, I don't want to get flagged by by uh, YouTube. Uh, so that's why I'm trying to be very careful with my words here. But yeah, I, I, I don't intend to get my stuff restricted. <laughs> so it's just, it's a shoot. He uses a, 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 a ray weapon, you know, stuff like that, whatever. <laughs> okay, so yeah, down 4 4 2, almost certainly. A little bit similar to like a wall stand 3 2 with knock this with it being NC. Uh, of course, the shoot option here is a high. So that means Victor has a 12 frame Punisher where you just duck the second hit and likely launch punish him. Also, one thing of interesting note, I'm sure everyone's noticed, the round itself, and notice I use the word round, uh, the round itself is is blue. So we kind of have like that ray gun laser sort of thing going on. Uh, we also see like the sparks uh, here for the hit. Uh, but yeah, plus frame option. So any sort of teleport for Victor appears to enter into power stance and once again notice how quickly uh, again this is at a quarter speed notice how quickly he's into power stance and then how quickly he's attacking so yeah power stance and crouch stance are gonna be insanely fast when is a stance not a stance okay but yeah power stance signified uh by the weapon on his back he has the sword ready to go so that's why from this position all of the the, the attacks shown uh, thus far except for power stance for uh, are all weapon based. So Victor goes for what's likely a power stance uh, three, one plus two. Also, uh, I, now I didn't really pick up on the Negan forward three or wall stand three simply because this looks like a high. Uh, and I imagine it's a high, kind of more similar since this is a power crush option, uh, more similar to like a Lars Wacklash where, you know, he does the high out of SE. So I think this is a high. I'm not going to discount the fact that this might be a mid, but uh, since Victor is like Raven, Kunimitsu, and a little bit of Lars, I'm inclined to believe this is more like a Wacklash. Okay, so now we see, once again, double double hand on the uh, sword attack. So that means this is a 1 plus 2. There are a few exceptions where uh, single hand attacks can be a double input, but they're pretty rare. So in this, in this context, it likely is a double. And just like the other uh, teleport options here. And, and it also, it should be noted that this teleport, kind of similar to Noctis 4-2, although the animation doesn't look identical, uh, but we see the teleport into White Hole. A again, this leaves Victor right next to Lars. Also, um, he's recovered by basically this frame. Uh, again, head tilt. Um, so he, he is plus frames on this position, but I, I highly doubt anything is guaranteed. Uh, again, this might just set up a meaty down back four of uh, wake up trap. Oh, sorry, there we go. The finger. So that's so it looks like Victor has the the dragon off finger too. So this is the first frame of recovery. So Victor's recovered here. So one, two, three. Okay, it, it knocked this. Or sorry, Lars is recovered as well. Usually, when you recover on the ground, your arms will prop themselves up to signify you've recovered. So it looks like it's it's about plus two. On hit, because yeah, by now uh, Lars is recovered. So notice the head shift. So plus two or plus three, maybe plus four. So one, two, three, four, five, plus five. Okay. Oh yeah. So here we see the the buildings moving in the background. Again, this might be trickery. Uh, with either we just teleport back to the same starting point, or there's a world where I suppose they could have made a, a big map, but I highly doubt it. Okay. So we see. Thang go for a crouch dash four one. This is basically, in case you don't know, his old one plus four, but now he can perform it out of FC. In CBT, just like one plus four, the crouch dash four one uh, staggered on block. Uh, so obviously this no longer staggers. Uh, also notice how this is non-jailing. So if Victor was to attack already, he could recover into the high. But yeah, look at again, look at the head animation. Locked on, so he's recovered by this frame. There goes the sword down. So yeah, non-jailing, which is gonna gonna suck. Uh, but here, Victor punishes with presumably a wall stand one. This could also be full crouch down forward one, similar to Geese. 
Uh, but A, because, you know, he plays a little bit similar to Lars. Lars is 15 frame, wall stand is wall stand one. One other thing of note, uh, he is slashing from left to right. So this is probably a homing spark. Uh, you notice the little sparkles in the air. Uh, so then that means this is also more similar to a Kazia wall stand two. Although I believe I did the, the frame counting and I think this is 15. But let's check it out. Let's count this. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it's either 14 or 15. I mean, that spark looks like it's hitting. It, my guess is, I don't think this is 15, 14. This is more likely, I think, 15. Although, the argument for it being actually a 14 would be that it doesn't appear that um, Victor has a 15 frame launcher. Maybe just like Raven, uh, his down four two hits on 16 or something like that. So uh, I could see making his maybe his full crouch punishment stronger, uh, but I believe this is the first impact frame. So it's hard to tell. It, not inconclusive, but it's either 14 or 15 by default. So, okay, so wall stand one, double over stun. We then see uh, Kunimitsu style 2-2. Uh, uh, this is hitting on 12, take my word for it. Uh, also, that's a 2-2, and then the third slash 2-2-2. Two, two, two. So again, very similar to Kuni, uh, but instead of transitioning into set, now Victor goes for the shoot instead. So kind of similar to knock this 2-2-4-2 two, two, two in application, but, 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 but the big difference, uh, instead of transitioning to an attack throw, uh, we now see an airborne spin, and, and note, there is a difference between a spin and a tornado spin. Tekken 8 <laughs> problems, by the way. Everyone's going to have to get used to that, but yeah, you can see the airborne spin. So we see the teleport into Power Stance, and then Victor performs Power Stance 2. Again, notice that he's only using one hand, so it likely is a, a 2 here. So yeah, Power Stance 2, causing uh, airborne tornado spin, so... Tornado spin is the official terminology, and I think it's important to distinguish once again, simply because spin is a thing now. Otherwise, it's 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 silly, but whatever. Okay, so now we see white hole into, I believe this hits on uh, 15 or 16. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so uh, 15 frame usually means stand 3. 16 would tend to point to down 4 or 3. Also, I, I talked about in the trailer that it's very likely that this isn't just stand three, uh, that this is actually a back three, one plus two. Mechanically, again, identical to knock this back for one plus two. So that's probably more logical, uh, which is why I think I decided that. But yeah, I, I think that to be the case. It probably it probably is like back three, one plus two or something like that. Okay, so uh, Leroy 4422 is minus 15. Victor goes for a uh, forward one plus two or one plus two, whatever it might be, which once again, mechanically identical to Asusena forward one plus two. It is a high power crushing heat engager. So again, this does point to the fact that Victor might not actually have a 15 frame launcher. At the same time though, talking about Asusena, Asusena does have down four two on 15. And then furthermore, there have been trailers where they show characters without a 15 frame launcher. And then when you play them in the game, uh, surprise, they have it. <laughs> so it, it is inconclusive. Again, him being based on Raven does bring credence to the fact that his, his 15 frame will be 16 or maybe 17. So yeah, that might be an issue with Victor. But don't get me wrong, especially if someone from Namco is watching this. That's a good thing. I, I like characters who are non-homogenized. I hate the homogenization, especially because like so many characters have so many Punishers. It's like... Bro, do you need everyone to do good at everything? No. Okay, one cool thing of animation note. So this heat engager in any time Victor's enters into heat causes these like anime style like sparks around him. So in real time, the animation looks very similar to like a like a, like a, a knife storm attack where he's just doing a bunch of sl slices in a row, uh, which makes sense because he's using a dagger and a karambit. But if you look at it in slow-mo, it's just like two, I don't know if concentric would be the word, uh, two circles that are on the same, on like a perpendicular plane that are moving across each other. But yeah, in, in fast mode, it looks like he's doing like a, a really quick, like, you know, 
sword swipe, like, no, shoo, 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 like sort of thing. But in slow-mo, you clearly see that's not the case, but I thought that was a nice touch. Like, you know, oh, I'm plus frame, oh, come at me, come at me, and, like, I'm gonna do my pressure. I don't know, maybe it's just me. <laughs> okay, so we see, I don't believe this be running two, but it might be. And the reason I don't believe this be running two is, A, it's a high, and if you look at the pattern when it comes to running attacks, typically males have only a single running attack, and female characters are the ones who have uh, a multiple. So one typically being a high, one being a mid, where the mid is minus zero or worse on block, and then the uh, high option is your plus frame. Uh, here, this running two, if, it, if that's what it is, is clearly plus frame, but I don't believe this to be a running two. Now, granted, you can't see the running buffer out of Heat Engager, so it's something that's special, the T8. Um, but still, I don't believe this to be a running attack, although I did consider it. But again, this does look very similar to uh, Gerald from uh, Soul Calibur 6, who has like a guard breaker attack. He also has an OTG, uh, and this is actually something I want to talk about. If you look at the pictures that were shown off with um, detailing Zafina, in the pictures, because we haven't seen a trailer for Zafina yet, she is performing her Rage Drive, and in case you don't know, uh, Zafina's Rage Drive is a 14-frame launcher. Uh, but more importantly than it being a 14-frame launcher, it is actually one of the few restands in the game. Uh, and what is a restand? A restand is just like it sounds. You basically take the opponent from a grounded, flinch, or airborne state, and then you put them into a standing state. So you are re-standing them up. So with Zafina, if you hit them mid-combo with the Rage Shroud, you'll literally push them back up into the air for your combo extension. There are a few restands in uh, Tekken 7. They are very rare, but it is a thing. If you compare uh, Gerald, and this is something I didn't put in the trailer breakdown because, you know, time. But yeah, I have the footage here. You know, let's check it out here. Um, you see on the screen. Uh, Gerald has a restand in his down one. Da sorry, not down one plus two. His 2A plus B is a restand. So I, I don't think there's a coincidence with them showing off this move and then showing Zafina having her, her rage drive where it is once again restanding. I don't think that's a coincidence. So this might be a mechanic that is special to T8. Uh, you know, they experimented it within T7 and now they're moving into the big leagues. A similar thing happened with Geese in I believe season two where Geese back two was the first character and only character with a wall bounce. Uh, and then later on in that season, Every character had a wall bounce, so again, this might be a preview of a new mechanic to T8, and this is more usually an anime mechanic, I think it's probably more fair uh, to say. But yeah, this is a mechanic that was around the T7, and, and hey, it maybe it will be the thing in, in T8. Again, pure speculation, but I, I'm gonna believe, I'm gonna say like 60% chance it probably is the case. So, okay, power stance plus frames, of course. We see uh, power stance four. I like the fact that. Off of this power stance, we see that Leroy is going for gun, back one plus two. Back one plus two, I-12 mid option. So when you see at plus frame, you see Victor going for power stance four, and you're comparing it against a 12 frame. And not only are we beating the 12 frame, but look, it, we're beating Leroy gun by like probably five frames. That means this, this knee is A, not just fast, but Power Stance Entrance is still probably a clean, like, 5. So this knee might hit on 12 or 13, maybe. And Power Stance is either plus 5 or plus 6 Entrance. So that's pretty, pretty good. Okay, so we see Counter Hit Spark, of course. There is a world, I suppose, where this, um, you know, the Lifter knee here is not a launcher unless it's a Counter Hit. Um, Raven has something similar where Raven has, um, it's not technically called Haze anymore, but I call it Haze because it's the same input. He has Haze 3, 1 plus 2. Uh, and Haze 3, 1 plus 2 is not a launcher. But in this case, this uh, power lifter, you know, power stance 4, 2 uh, might actually require counter hit uh, to be a launcher. But it's hard to say. So, of course, we see a teleport 2. I don't believe this to be an airborne stance. I believe this to be a canned animation because we commonly see this ground pound happen often. And at the same time, uh, like I mentioned in the short trailer version, it looks very similar to Raven wall stand three, two, down back one, two, one. Uh, he does like the sure you can teleport. So I, I think uh, again, Victor being uh, the one who trained the Ravens, this is a Raven two spin, you know, tornado spin option. What that really means though, 
is that this ground pound is likely minus 14 on block. So just like Raven, you have to either commit or know that a Punisher's the Punisher to commit to it. Otherwise, you put yourself in a more minus 14 position. The good news is not a lot of characters have a 14 frame launcher. Really, just in CBT, you have Lars, Brian. Oh, I guess technically the Machimas have a 14 frame launcher, but there aren't a lot of options to punish you. So that's not the worst thing in the world. But it is something of note that it likely is punishable. Okay, we see Victor dash up and perform the heat burst. We know it's a heat burst because he loses the heat animation or heat state right as he pops it. So notice the flash on the screen. Also, two things. It's a low, but it's also a weapon. So if they indeed nerf the heat burst, uh, which, or sorry, not heat burst, heat smash, my apologies. If they do nerf heat smash, which they should definitely do before uh, retail comes out, that means you can't low parry it because it's a weapon. So that's a big, big deal. Also, I think it's interesting. So when Victor performs the top-down attack, he basically does like a, a 2D style fissure attack. And we notice how like there are like these massive like fought flames coming out of the ground. Also, when uh, Leroy gets hit, he gets pushed to basically where the flame last occurred at. So that leads me to believe that, you know, the fissure likely does occur on block. And then he might go into teleport stance, you know, like a power stance afterwards for plus frames, in which case you kind of kind of reset the situation and whatnot. But yeah, I believe he's going to do the full animation because there are a few characters who don't go full animation. But in this case, I think he's going to go the distance. So, Okay, we see uh, the, the intro talking with both him and Raven. Uh, of, of course, Victor is the head of the Raven unit, the Raven force, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so they know each other. I don't know if there's necessarily any bad blood. I mean, Raven is coming out for blood, right? <laughs> with the, with the, the top-down dagger attack. So maybe maybe he is. Maybe there is some history there. But at the same time, I think this is more like a, a sparring kind of jest with each other. Uh, with that being said, I, I don't know if you ever want to open with your friend with like a dagger attack. And like, wh what if Victor was like on the phone, like, right? What if he wasn't ready? Well, you, you kill your mentor, like, <laughs> right? I know it's a little bit silly, but whatever. Also, notice the bridge is right here. Uh, so this gives credence to the fact that we likely start with the bridge. But yeah, again, I don't know if we're going to go under the other bridge, if we teleport, or exactly what's going to happen. Or maybe it's just a really slow barge. Maybe it takes us two hours to reach the, the next port, but I, I doubt it. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so intro. So we see the donkey kick option. Like I said, it looks very similar to Shaheen Downback 4. Although I don't believe this would be a natural hit launcher, what I think this more likely is, is similar to the wall stand 3-2 that we see later. Uh, this probably requires Victor to hit an extension. So in a way, it might be kind of similar to uh, Lydia stand 3 into 2, where the stand 3 by itself doesn't launch, but the follow-up hit does launch. In that case with Lydia, you know, you duck hers, but for Victor, maybe uh, the stand 3 or Damek 3 here into stand 2 would, again, like Raven, B-14 on block. But as I mentioned in the trailer, notice the recovery speed. So back back 2 occurs really fast, and if this was any other move, this might get him hit, but look, by the time Raven finally does the teleport, Victor is almost fully recovered. So yeah, he, he's, he's blocking for a few frames before the backpack two hits, so uh, pretty impressive. Again, this might go to the fact that, you know, again, he might have to hit two, the ground pound, to do a launcher anyway. Uh, one other thing of note, the wall stand three, even though I directly compared, you know, talking about Raven, this could also be very similar to like a Lars stand three. Notice how it's a high. Uh, Lars does have the option to hold down the transition into full crouch. So maybe it's like a little bit of both. Maybe he has a little bit of, of Raven there, transition to ground pound, or maybe he can go into full crouch or maybe a stance just like Lars can. So uh, one you know, big, big thing of note there. Okay, so we see uh, Raven try to interrupt with the shadow one plus two back turn. Victor hits him with a uh, command up forward one plus two, which is basically the Raven Undertaker. We see the kick up. But instead of Victor doing an airborne uh, neck breaker, uh, he comes down with a ground pound into like a sword smash. Uh, earlier, you know, later we'll see the heat mode version of this. So I, I doubt uh, this Undertaker throw is powered up under heat mode, but who knows? Maybe, maybe it is there. Who knows? 
Okay, so down back forward that looks almost identical to Lars's. I believe this down back forward gun shoot is likely a canned attack throw. I don't think I, I don't think Victor is the one hitting the button here. So that is something of note. Also, I like how with all these shoot animations, you see the slide pull back. So the whole top of the, the weapon there pulls back to basically eject the spent casing and to load the next round in the chamber. So I, I like how they have a little detail with that uh, kind of uh, sliding and then rack. Okay, so we see wall stand three, two, ground pound. Again, uh, this looks nearly identical in practicality and use to Ravens. So we see tornado spin option. The nice thing, notice also the tornado spin is very high. This is not a carrying tornado spin. This is more like a big boy combo uh, powers, uh, power spot mechanic, you know, top right corner for Victor. So. I, I like it. I like it. Okay, so dash up, stand two. It looks like he cancels the 2-2, the, the two -two, opts to go for a one instead. I don't know if this is like just the general animation. Almost certainly is. It's just like, oh, instead of going for 2-2, two -two, I mix up the time. I'm going to hit you with 2-1 instead. Uh, both of them are high, of course. And then we see the, uh, the little arm flex, the elbow flex, uh, which signifies that we are in crouch stance. So from here, we see Crouch Stance 3, which I talked about. Lift your knee, of course. Probably a big wall spot. It is a heat engager from the purple sparks as well. But yeah, I, I don't know if this will be like a heat dashable launcher. My guess is you probably can't, but uh, we'll definitely be very strong by the wall. So uh, be ready for that. Also, um, this the, the Crouch Stance 3 or Up 4 3, whatever it might be. Uh, might be more similar to like a Josie up forward 3 plus 4, so it probably isn't safe, so that's just one thing of note as well. Although we don't have an animation with any of the ninja characters with a knee like this, uh, nor with Lars, so uh, a, v a very uniquely um, Victor attack. Okay, so here we see an animation that's similar-ish uh, to down forward 4, but the difference here uh, is this attack is actually pretty slow. It's It's way slower than 12, so there you see the head tilts, this frame one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, which would we hit our down for four on 12, 13, 14, 15. So on frame 15, our advancing knee is hitting. Uh, again, I don't believe this to be um, the down for four two. This might be a similar animation otherwise. Although interestingly enough, it still transitions into the shoot uh, stance. So. Maybe this is like forward four, a little bit slower, longer range version of down forward four. Or maybe, no, because he's at zero, so there, there's no shot this is hitting on 12 ever. So I don't know. I don't know for a fact. Oh, yeah, here we go. So uh, notice the, the glass is broken. So whoever was recording this video clearly was doing their combo practice here <laughs> to get ready for this trailer. Uh, so I think that's a, fu that's a funny little touch there. Oh, yeah, notice the glass is okay. And now we get over to the wall, the glass is all broken. Okay, so shoot option. Uh, one thing of note with the shoot is this is hopefully a good sign. In Tekken 8, uh, if I remember correctly, the command parries don't work against projectiles and a lot of attacks. So Leroy can no longer, I think, parry gun uh, or any sort of hit, uh, including heat, uh, sorry, heat, heat smash, my apologies. So maybe this is a good sign that they've already nerfed the inability to parry certain options. But here... Uh, of course, we see uh, Raven do the command back 1 plus 3 or back 2 plus 4, which teleports him out of the way. It works against highs, lows, and mids, and then he recovers into FC. So from shoot, as usual, uh, teleport transitions into uh, power stance. And I talked about this in the trailer video, but I don't believe this to be an, an auto low parry. Usually, if there was an auto low parry, we'd either get a really clean animation, like something special, or Victor would not be flinching at all. So, for instance, when Leroy gets his auto low parry, he literally doesn't move until he gets hit. Uh, but here, first animation, uh, we clearly see that Victor is flinching. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So maybe, 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 okay, well, maybe this is like Dragonov down forward one plus two, right? Maybe uh, Victor is flinching low and he's expecting you to hit him, but same thing. I would have seen there would be an animation. It, we'd either see like like doppelganger jutsu sort of stuff. There is a world and you see the actually the background glitches. So, I mean, nothing you do about that is bad calling, I suppose. But 
yeah, I mean, it, okay, it could possibly be an auto low parry, but I'm not sold. I don't think that's what's going on here. Now, with that being said, I am inclined to believe that when Victor enters power stance, uh, that's it. Yeah, he, he is required to do something out of power stance. So whether that means to do a power crush uh, or some sort of other attack, which does at the same time give credence to the fact that when Victor performs the shoot and then teleports, that I would imagine because you're forced into power stance, that you can actually enter into white hole similar to Raven by tapping up. So here, rather than us teleport into power stance where we can't block, we can't, you know, do, uh, we can't move, blah, 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 blah. Uh, instead, when we perform the shoot teleport, just like White Hole, we can tap up the cancel power stance and then teleport in with White Hole. Now, granted, uh, you are teleporting in, so you, you technically could get possibly mashed out and launched, but I think that's what's going to be the MO with this attack. I, I don't think, I don't think this is, this is it. We either are all in or not. Um, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world because that's kind of how Leroy already is. But same thing, I don't think that's going to be the case here. Okay, so then we see, again, Power Stance 2. This time causing the wall splat. Uh, again, there is the evasion against the incoming down forward 3 of Raven, uh, but I don't think that to be the case. I think there is some shenanigans going on here that maybe there is like a, a just like uh, Kunimitsu Teleport 4, that there is maybe an actual invulnerability frame, uh, but same time, I don't think this has anything to do with it being a low. I think that's just Namco showing off, saying, hey, cool, this uh, also works against lows, uh, which, keep in mind, Teleport 4 with Kuni beats lows and mids. So, again, this wouldn't be brand new for Victor. Okay, so we see White Hole. Pops the Rage Drive. Again, notice the slashes <laughs> all over. I, I love that shit. <laughs> Uh, a little bit chinky animation, kind of similar to like a down forward 1 plus 2. Ground word with like a, a, a Nina down forward 1 plus 2, but whatever. And then he dash up a uh, stand for option. So I think I, I counted the frames on this one. So we have the arm flinch. Arm flinch is our, our frame one. So one, two... Oh yeah, actually, this is a good point. So usually when you're looking at these videos, the videos are fully in 60 frames. So one frame, two frame, three frame. You know, so on and so forth. Uh, but for this move, at the end of the video, I think they might have had an encoding problem. And we're getting skipped frames. So here's one frame. Or sorry, frame one as he pulls the weapon back. So one, two. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's the third frame. Four, five, six. Uh-oh. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 and then uh oh the frame is missing now now that hits on frame 14 so okay maybe that hits on 11 but we can't tell uh, because the encoder fucked up so yeah that's that's one of the reasons why you can't go purely by uh these videos to do frame determinations a you know unreleased product it can change uh but b if they a record in 30 frames or b have an encoder problem uh what can you do okay so we see a 4-3 um, I would be remiss to say that clearly he looks like Bayek, right? This is like a this is like a four three series with Bayek. Also with the suit, he looks like Bayek as it is. So maybe the initial design character was to be more of a Bayek type, and then they're like, you know what? Let's just give him an anime sword. But yeah, four three mid option. So notice how uh, kind of similar to Harong four three. So again, Harong four hitting on 11, so maybe that gives credence as being 11 frames. I'm inclined to believe it to be 12 or 13, uh, but 4-3, mid-option, and then he follows up uh, with the downward uppercut, kind of similar to like Bayek down back two, but I think maybe they just like, oh, you know what, let's just give him a, a Bayek move or something, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but here, it's important to note that Raven is in the low slump uh, state, so this very, very clearly is actually a combo, uh, and for people who don't know, uh, so when you typically do your combo, you get two wall hits into a low slump. In T8, uh, they better signify low slump by putting you into a roll state. So uh, this roll state basically signifies to us, the viewer, or people who are informed, that this is probably the preferred wall combo. Also notice there's a spark on this hit. Sparks, I think, activate on 21 damage. Uh, so this final hit does a fuck ton of damage. 
and with the unscaled low slump reset, it's doing uh, probably at least uh, 12 points of damage on the final hit. But yeah, we can tell, again, this is a proper combo from the roll state. Okay, so this was really hard to see, and in hindsight, I should have mentioned something. Uh, but he parries. But look at look at the animation. Uh, so he parries back uh, two from Raven. But look how the 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 weapon is drawn right to his his hand like instantly. So this is probably similar to like a knock this back one plus three or back two plus four parry. But yeah, I believe him. He is stunning Raven uh, with the weapon here. Although we don't see the round go anywhere. But yeah, in this frame you do see the silver of the receiver, the top of the slide there specifically. Not the receiver so much, but we see the top of it here. So clearly that's what he's doing. He's performing a shoot parry. But yeah, it's kind of interesting how like, the, it's like it just, <laughs> it just teleports his hand or whatever. The, the guy has gun kata, you know. Shout out to Christian Bale. Okay, so we see Raven stuck in a stun. Here, Victor goes for what's likely a forward 4-1. Four, uh, again, mechanically identical to uh, knock this forward for two, uh, except he is doing it with a high instead. Also, um, frame-wise, I think it hits on 15. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four. Okay, 14. So uh, this forward for two on 14 would be closer, a uh, closer analog to something like Negan down forward forward two, which is a 14 frame Punisher. Uh, he also does have the dagger attack to be a launcher, quote unquote, with uh, 14. But his down forward four is very easy to hit on 14. So I guess a better analog would once again be Negan down forward forward two. But yeah, this otherwise looks very similar to knock. This is also um, in the same vein. Of course, is a heat engager and a high strike. This likely like knock this forward forward two will cause wall splat uh, when you're by the wall. So that's another thing of note. Although, I guess if it's more like Negan down 4 4 2, it wouldn't. But um, I, I'm still inclined to believe it's more like knock this 4 4 2. Okay, we see the slicey slicey. Okay, so taking the plus frames, he goes for the big overhead strike. In heat mode, notice how his sword is like specifically glowing. Uh, you see the electric there. But when he's in heat mode, yeah, it's like almost like the Ghostbusters. Like really big flames coming off of the, of the sword uh, specifically. Uh, but now the overhead strike is plus frames. Notice the proper guard stun here, and then transition into he uh, sorry into power stance. So here Ravens recovered, but um, Victor is already attacking by here. So it looks to be maybe plus. Okay, th there's the head flinch. Okay, let's count it properly. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Six, nose the head flinch. So now overhead strike has gone from minus four on block uh, to plus six. Victor does go for the, the downward sword. And this is something I had thought about, but I forgot to talk about it in the video. Yeah, this, this looks so much like a nightmare 2B plus K, but I forgot to record it. And behind the scenes, the reason I forgot to record it is because I wanted to record Setsuka footage directly. A, I couldn't find my copy of Soul Calibur 3. Uh, B, I didn't realize Setsuka was DLC. I, I love Soul Calibur, but the game is dead. I'm paying six bucks for Setsuka. Come on, man. You're killing me, Namco. I would pay ten bucks for, like, the season pass, but... Okay, yeah, but yeah, it very much looks like a Nightmare uh, ground attack. So very, very, very much looks like it. Also, I think, uh, Yo uh, not Yoshimitsu. Yeah, it looks like Mitsurugi's downstab, but I think this is a closer analog to Nightmare. So... Uh, inconclusive on the frame data. Obviously here, Raven's getting pretty, you know, hit pretty far away. There is still time for him to hit the ground and possibly for uh, Victor to follow up. But my guess is because this sword put away takes about, you know, like five or six frames. From this anit frame, we probably have at least two more frames of animation. Which means Raven will probably be about down here, possibly by the time Victor recovers. So that would also mean by the time Victor attacks... Raven's probably on the ground or in a tech roll state, so with nothing follow up. So very similar, I guess, to Geese's Raging Storm. This might only really work by the wall for follow up. So that's my guess. Victor probably does get follow up if you're by the wall, just like Geese. 
Okay, so uh, for some reason, Raven transitions into Hay Stance, open field. Victor makes a sick read and goes for the overhead smash. He is in heat mode, of course, because as soon as it hits, he pops heat dash, gets the combo. Okay, so we have what's likely a forward three or stand three. I think I call this stand three in the video. Uh, and also, it's likely stand three. Once again, I talk about down four threes are, are usually a frame or two slower. Let's go ahead and count this frame. Okay, maybe can't count this frame. There's the head flinch. Okay, there's the head flinch. See it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, sixteen also. Okay, interesting. Okay, so we see some sort of three, four series. The the knee is of course a high, unless talking about what we talked about earlier with power stance three, looking very similar. Maybe it's a mid, but almost certainly this is a high. So three, four, two ground sp uh, pound, tornado spin of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, thanks whoever brought this up. I, I wouldn't have noticed it back then. I probably would have noticed it now, but I do appreciate uh, getting comments. Uh, but notice when Victor performs the ground pound that when he goes to do the shoot, we have a flinch here. So the flinch probably signifies a quarter circle forward input. So like Kunimitsu Kunai, uh, QCF1, it's very likely that Victor's shoot might not be forward two like he's playing Noctis, but maybe it's more like an analog of Kunimitsu QCF1. Also, one thing I noticed right there is when he goes to perform shoot, it looks like he actually crouches. So he's maybe high crushing, and now he's in standing. So it might, uh, and keep in mind, this isn't the QCF, like, like he's not entering the QCF and he's crouching. No, this is like part of the animation. So crouching, crouching. Now standing, so it might actually have some crush to it. Okay, high shoot. Uh, we see the spin, teleport, and teleports enter into power stance. Power stance, uh, likely down forward using Asusena as a guide. Uh, Asusena has leap down four four, which is her hell sweep. So that this likely is a lee, uh, sorry, not leap, uh, power stance down four, because A, we've already seen power stance four. Uh, so yeah, this is probably down four. And then he does a high option. Notice the, the big slash, the horizontal slash, and it is causing um, Raven to get pushed away. So it likely is some sort of hell sweep in neutral. So that means if you add a power stance, if they are closing up against the three or the two option, like the mids, yeah, you have a big hell sweep to open them up. So I don't, I'm not a fan personally of hell sweep, like out of stance, but whatever. What can you do? Okay, and like this is what I was talking about. Notice he does white hole. He's already recovered. Raven's on the ground, so that means if Raven tries to mash out, Victor can do a down back four attack throw. Oh, okay, wow, we're at the end here. Yeah, so uh, it, it is hard to tell the frame data here because um, there is slow motion, and I don't know the exact conversion from slow motion to real time, but we do have a context clue here. Uh, and the context clue here is that this is the first frame of animation two, three, and now we see the flinch on Raven. Uh, Raven one plus two is I-14. It's also a heat engager. And if we look at the impact frame of where Victor hits uh, Raven, Victor hits Raven on like the last frame before active. So mathematically, if he's hitting him on the last frame, we're plus three into a 14. Uh, so that means we're hitting on 16. If this was hitting on 17, we would trade against each other uh, but because we're beating by a frame clean, again, that's 3 plus 14 minus 1, or 16. So if you're wondering how I came to the 16 frame determination, uh, yeah, this is likely a 16, which isn't the best because Noctis up forward 1 hits on 13. Uh, second of all, I talk about Negan up forward 2, which this is a very much a big analog of. But a big difference with up forward 2 is up forward 2 with Negan is a mid. So it's weird how it looks like Victor has a 16 frame counter at launcher uh, that's a high, so I don't know if that's a, a good thing or a bad thing, but that is something of note that will be a, a really big difference between current Noctis play uh, and Victor. So, Okay, we see uh, the Rage Art follow-up, of course. Now, um, to be fully honest, I'm not a fan of the Rage Art, and the reason I'm not a fan of the Rage Art, and let me go full speed. So the first couple hits are okay. We see this anime-ass thing. But bro, why is he still talking? 
<laughs> like, look look at the dead time, right? Okay, so, okay, we free, we hold. Two frames, or sorry, two seconds. Now we do a charge up, bro? What are you, there's the two seconds of nothing happening. And now we do the strike. What? <laughs> like, I, there's a lot I like about Victor. This is horrible. This is a horrible ray chart. And it, it's not even like people are complaining how this looks very like very similar to like Noctis's rage art, right where he does like the downward strike. But at least like Noctis does something when he does it. But again, we're like three seconds of literally nothing happening on the screen. <laughs> look, look, look how long that takes. If you notice when I did the trailer breakdown, there was like two seconds of dead time because there's nothing for me to talk about. What am I gonna talk about? Oh, that looks really cool. I can't wait to wait around for like five seconds where nothing happens. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. I, I'm just not a fan of the sword. The sword itself. Also, this animation should really be cut down. Like, he doesn't need to draw the sword. He doesn't need to swipe down. There, There's nothing like dramatic about it. Also, if you think of the context, Raven, Raven's getting like a, a really good like five second breather <laughs> while the animation's going. Oh, actually, there we see Raven getting up off the ground too. Okay, so he's like, oh, I'm hurt. My, my, my ribs. Why are you slicing me? <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's a silly animation. They, they, need a, they need to improve that. If anything, like looking at this here, he does like this like, you know, uh, samurai like anime style attack. Wouldn't it be better if he just did like an anime swipe through Raven? Or maybe they thought it was too similar to Yoshimitsu. So they're like, oh, we got to do something different. Again, that's the only complaint I have about Victor. The sword, I would like to see a more like traditional sword. And then second of all, I would just like to see that an the Rage Art animation redone because it's ho it's horrible. <laughs> it really is bad. Everything else is great. You know, I don't I don't I can't hate on the the Raven Cooney Lars hybrid. I can't hate on the stage. I can't hate on the music. There is so much about this character I like, but that sword ain't it, man. That's 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 it's a silly. Just. Give him a traditional sword, man. That's all he really needs. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Comments, questions, concerns, hit me up in, in the comments there. Uh, if I made any mistakes, let me know as usual. But I'm I'm hopeful. I, I can't wait to see the Evo exhibition matches which, between all the, the tournament people. I really hope they show us a later build of Tekken. Uh, that way we can get some context of what's going on. Uh, the one thing I really like about them doing the, the Tournament of Champions or whatever you want to call it for EVO with Tekken 8 Tournament, uh, I really like the idea that none of them have played Tekken 8. So, like, you know, whereas we we're sitting at home for CNT and CPT, uh, they were on tournament, you know, playing T7. So uh, they, they have experience, but they have, like, no more, nowhere near as much experience as we do. But at the same time, they're, like, significantly better than us, right? I'm not going to have disillusions here. But it will be interesting to see how spicy it is and... If we do see a, a later build with like a Dragonov, I want to see Nobi playing some Dragonov. Let's see it. Let's see it, Namco. Don't don't be cowards there. But uh, yeah, that'll be about it for me. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, hopefully in the next trailer for a character that we have no idea who it's going to be. So I'll see you guys in that trailer in uh, a few days. Okay, later all.